Charlie Munger's Daily Journal nearly doubling down on a China bet. Well, we did it for a very simple reason. We got more strength per dollar invested. When the investment magnate Charlie Munger adds to an existing position in his thriving equities portfolio, it's a great idea to pay attention to it. In the third quarter of 2021, the Berkshire Hathaway vice chairman doubled down on his already sizable Alibaba stocks, bringing his total stake to over $50 million. Alibaba and JD.com are two of the biggest e-commerce retailers in China. While the former does have greater control of the market, the latter is believed to be China's largest direct retailer in terms of revenue. But Munga says that Alibaba will smash JD and here's why. Welcome to Wall Street winners. Let's discuss why Charlie Munga has a steadfast belief in Alibaba and not its competitor JD. In March last year, Munga commented that the Chinese government would, in fact, allow businesses to flourish. His justification was that since the government had actively changed communism by accepting Adam Smith and adapting to a communism with Chinese characteristics, it implied that China was a free market with a bunch of billionaires. Let's compare China's two biggest e-commerce retailers. While Alibaba and JD are often pitted against each other, comparing the two may seem like apples and oranges. In the 2021 fiscal year, Alibaba had generated 87% of its revenue and all of its profits from the core commerce units. This included its brick-and-mortar stores, Taobao and Tmall marketplaces, cross-border and international marketplaces, and of course, its Kainyao Logistics subsidiary. Now, Alibaba generates most of its revenue from third-party sellers that pay a high margin listing fee. But the company has been gradually increasing its dependence on its low-margin brick-and-mortar stores, international channels and cross-border trade to steadily boost its revenue. For example, if we consider only its Chinese retail businesses, it serves approximately 891 million annual active consumers within China, whereas its global ecosystem has more than a billion consumers. The rest of Alibaba's top-line revenue for fiscal 2021 came from three unprofitable segments, namely Alibaba Cloud, which is China's largest cloud infrastructure platform, the digital media and entertainment division that houses its streaming video platform Yoku Tudo, its mobile gaming unit Lingxi, and finally, its innovation initiatives segments, where new products and services are incubated and developed. Operating losses from these segments accounted for 4.9% of Alibaba's total revenue for the year. But in a twist of events, Alibaba Cloud turned out profitable on an adjusted EBITDA, that's earnings before interest, taxes and amortization, basis over the last two quarters. Coming to JD, it generated 94% of its revenue and all of its profits from its JD retail segment in fiscal 2020. The company makes most of its money from its well-established first-party marketplace, which fulfills orders with its own warehouses and logistics network, a different model from Alibaba. However, it does operate a smaller marketplace for brick-and-mortar stores and third-party merchants. In the first quarter of 2021, JD had approximately 500 million annual active customers, a roughly 20% increase from 2020. Needless to say, this number has increased since then. The rest of the company's revenue came from its unprofitable new business segments like JD Cloud and its third-party logistics services for external consumers. Operating losses, however, were only equivalent to 0.3% of the total revenue for that year. So, which company is growing faster? Both Alibaba and JD had lucrative growth during the pandemic, especially since the pandemic was contained earlier in China than the rest of the world. The two companies also benefited immensely from their aggressive expansions into smaller cities in the country. In the 2021 fiscal year, Alibaba's revenue rose by 41% to 4,109.5 billion. If its consolidation of the superstore owner, Sun Art, would have been excluded, its revenue would have still risen by 32%. Its operating income, on the other hand, dipped 2%, largely due to the antitrust fine imposed in China, but its adjusted net income, which excludes the fine and stock-based compensation, still rose by 30%. In the coming fiscal year, Analysts believe that Alibaba's revenue will rise to 36%, whereas its adjusted earnings might dip by 2%. The anticipated dip is owing to the fact that Alibaba will be continuing to expand its lower-margin retail channels and so far unprofitable non-core business. The elimination of exclusive deals with merchants and tougher oversight of its future investments and other acquisitions might also dial down its earnings growth. As for JD, its revenue rose by 29% to $114.3 billion in fiscal 2020, whereas its adjusted earnings increased 57%. The company's bottom-line growth was driven by the scale of its first-party logistics platform and tighter cost controls at JD Retail and other new businesses.
Unlike Alibaba, JD will not face a lot of pressure from antitrust regulators. Even in the first quarter of 2021, it boasted impressive growth and analysts predict that its revenue will grow by 28% in this fiscal year. However, it will see an earnings decline of 4%. Some economists have suggested that all the regulatory pressure Alibaba is facing could lead to JD's faster growth. If this is true, it could lead to a fall in Alibaba's market share while helping JD's business in the long term. However, Charlie Munger has a different opinion. In addition to his statements about the Chinese government allowing markets to flourish, he praised its transition from Maoist beliefs to a modern economy. According to David Kass, a clinical professor of finance at the University of Maryland, Munger's steadfast belief in Beijing's motivation could be fueled by the input of a few trusted advisors attuned to China's tech space. This includes Li Lu, the founder of Himalaya Capital Management. Also, Munger's belief could be solidified based on the fact that China's government is easing up on its regulatory rampage. China's looming real estate issues are becoming more problematic due to moral hazard concerns. As the focus shifts, it is likely that the punishment for tech names might be coming to a close. Therefore, a key overhang that held back the Alibaba stock since 2020 may finally be fading away. Also, Alibaba did not show any signs of slowing down, even in its most recent quarterly earnings report. The overall revenue growth stands at 29%, whereas its year-over-year -year revenue growth rate has also been significantly higher than JD's despite the pandemic. A significant portion of Alibaba's predicted future growth will come from cloud services and e-commerce. In the next decade, both of the sectors are expected to exponentially grow globally. For the first time in world history, expenditures in cloud infrastructure services exceeded $50 billion in just a single quarter, that is, Q4 of 2021. The global cloud computing market is expected to reach $1,554.94 billion by 2030, with a compound annual growth rate of 15.7%, according to a study conducted by Grandview Research. Alibaba has had a strong performance in its cloud business and recently, in Q4, it boasted positive earnings in this segment. The cloud business is improving due to the economies of scale, and Alibaba has managed to capture almost a third of China's market. It will also be expanding to international locations, hence further boosting its revenue and margins in this segment. Alibaba Cloud also has a higher market share in China than Amazon Web Services in the USA. Another plus point is that Alibaba will not face big competition from the US tech giants in its home turf. On the other hand, JD's cloud division is only a small fraction of Alibaba and doesn't even come up in a list of top 5 cloud companies in China. Similarly, in 2022, the e-commerce sector is expected to break its 20% barrier of total retail sales for the very first time. Over the next two years, e-commerce is expected to generate 22.5% of total retail sales. Many analysts are of the opinion that physical retail is on its last legs, which means that brick-and-mortar stores are on their way out. However, there is a chance that e-commerce will not account for 30% of total retail sales in 2030. In 2022, the e-commerce sector itself has projected to grow by 12.23% and have a valuation of $604 billion. If the market hold of physical retail does decrease over the next four years, e-commerce can grow by $2.35 trillion, that is, 49.67%. In general, overall retail sales are expected to grow from $26.03 trillion to $31.27 trillion over the next four years as well. As for JD, it has also shown rapid growth in new businesses like logistics, payments, and health. JD Health has a valuation of approximately $30 billion, but Alibaba has also performed well in this sector. Because more health services are going digital, Alibaba Health could see faster growth since it has a larger pool of consumers. JD's logistics venture also competes with Alibaba's delivery business, but the latter's gross merchandise value is higher than JD, giving it a better valuation number. Currently, China is also seeing its largest COVID-19 surge since its initial spike in cases over two years ago. President Xi Jinping is ordering major lockdowns to curb the rise in infections. The ongoing Russia-Ukraine conflict, which is nearing a month of the war, is sending oil prices through the roof while contributing to terrifying global inflation. It will be interesting to know how these two aspects will affect Alibaba and JD. Overall, Alibaba is in a good position in various segments like cloud, logistics, advertising, healthcare and more. Wall Street is only giving the Baba stock a lower valuation due to regulatory headwinds. Looks like Charlie Munger did go all in at the right time. Do you agree? Or could JD emerge victoriously? Comment below. If you liked our video, subscribe to our channel, hit the like button and turn on the notifications bell.